Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment to talk about the real situation that is the acceptance of proxy in the MTG community. I'm not, I don't have an opinion either way. My personal take is I no longer trade unless I don't trade for any cards that do not have the hollow foil stamp, mainly because it's not worth it to me. There are two scenarios that can happen if you are if you do end up trading for a fake. One is you point it out and the person either knows or doesn't know. If they do know, then it creates this strange situation for you where you just caught them red-handed and you might not know what to do. Now, if they don't know, then you kind of feel bad for them because they were duped by someone else. Now, how many proxies have I seen at my locals? I've seen a lot. I've only seen them increase in time. In certain areas, like Canada, there are a ton of proxies because one of the manufacturers is in Canada. And you might say, isn't this a little bit drastic that you're changing your trading and behavior? I have not sold a card on Magic Online Trading League. I have not sold a card for at least six months, uh, given the new fourth generation of... Because I don't want to sell you a real card and then you own a proxy and then you say I sent you a proxy. That would be very, very bad for me. So any cards that I would ever sell in the future would have the hollow foil. I would never sell a dual land again unless it's in person and the person is knowledgeable as or my friend as to how to spot a fake. My biggest concern would be if I sent you a real card, you were a scammer and you had fakes and I know a lot of people contact me on Facebook with a lot of fake cards all the time and then you said I sent you a fake. That is an absolute disaster and that's why I no longer trade online at all. I do not trade at online at all uh, because that is something I worry about. Now, when you talk about the profit margin and why people, a lot of people get confused as to everyone believes they're using this for their cube, but the orders volumes, some people order 100, some people have ordered 1,000. How many cubes do you, are you trying to make with 1,000 sets of 54 cards a set? So you have 54,000 fake magic cards for personal use. Does that sound correct to anyone? Um, and that person who's buying a thousand or a hundred, they outscale the people actually using it for their cube. So the trend has been, don't sell them as real cards, sell them as proxies, sell them as high quality proxies. And that has gone very well for these stores. So let's talk about the profit margin on these proxies. They cost five to 10 cents to make, you can sell them for 10 to let's say $15. And assuming you sell, you know, let's say you get from 10 cents to $10, that is a profit margin of 100%, 100% profit margin. Sorry, not 100%, 100x. So that is a 10,000% profit margin. There's nothing there is nothing out there over 10,000% profit margin that you can sell as hotcakes. Uh, the eBay seller that we previously looked at, he had 56 bids. Um, the, about 40 of them are unique. If we believe that he can get 100 unique bids and he can sell it for $300, the cost to him is for 30 cards, 30 fake cards, it's $3. He can sell it for $300. Let's assume he sells it for, for $300 and $3 and then the shipping tacked on to like $318 then he's going to make $300 for a hundred different people. And if he can do this for a month, that is a lot of money. That's $30,000 a month times 12 gives him $360,000 a year and just power nine, not considering what else he can sell in modern as well as standard. Uh, and overall, that is why there's so many proxies because it is a extremely profitable model. It's a model that they did not understand. Um, if they don't play Magic the Gathering, they don't get why someone would not, why someone would spend $10 for a fake card. That's beyond them, right? They, they don't get it. 
uh, and the fake card is very easy to duplicate because it's not like Pokemon where the hollow foils in Pokemon are very difficult to duplicate. The hollow foils in uh, some in Yu-Gi-Oh, the secret rares are, I imagine, very difficult to duplicate. The ghost rares were very look amazing and they look difficult to duplicate. But when you have cards that sell for five thousand dollars and all they are are cardboard with no foil, no protection, nothing, because Richard Garfield once said that if any magic card gets over twenty dollars, he failed. The game has failed. So when they were inventing the game, they did not expect cards to be over twenty dollars. Now cards are twenty thousand dollars. So I would warn you that this is just. Um, it has been happening for some time. It's not going to stop because the business model is a high school student and his garage can make $360,000 in an Etsy store or on eBay. Why would they not do it? Especially if they live in a country where this is not, let's say, let's assume it's not legal in that country, but it's no one's going to prosecute them because they're just getting American money or Canadian money or money from someone else and the country has bigger issues to deal with then yes this becomes a highly profitable model because i don't know too many jobs that makes three hundred and sixty thousand dollars this easily anyway that's it guys bye